Blink 4 Threes just revealed their ranked settings for Halo Infinite. Now I feel these settings blend the two of competitive, balance, and sandbox viability all in one, with some very interesting choices made for the competitive settings as well. Do you want to know more? Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Hi guys, welcome to the channel, the channel that keeps you up to date with everything going on with Halo. We had a big reveal today about some competitive slash ranked settings for Halo Infinite. And I wanted to break down everything that's unique with these settings and how some minute changes have been made to the core gameplay aspects of Halo Infinite to make it more viable and more balanced experience to play. Like how the Repulsor plays differently within ranked modes and how we actually have fully auto weapons in ranked, which is crazy to think about. So if you guys like these news and informational kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay updated with everything going on with Halo as we wrap up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. So today on the Halo YouTube channel, guys, we had a reveal of some actual edgy as competitive ranked gameplay. And guys, it does look pretty great. It looks like it plays into the legacy of what competitive Halo has been and something that's familiar yet new with all the new mechanics and sandbox elements that we have in with the reveal of Halo and its competitive settings for ranked and stuff like that. And there's some interesting weapons mixed in with this, but let's just go right into like the TLDR of everything with this. And then we can go into the details later throughout this video. So a blog here posted by 343 goes into all the little details about this and some of the philosophies by some of the designers as well as some of the competitive players here. But they say basically the TLDR of it is BR starts only. We'll be only starting with the battle rifle off the bat when you play into the game. You have motion tracker is going to be disabled. Grenade hit markers are disabled as well, which for me is absolutely huge. Friendly Fire is turned on as well. The modes that we'll be playing is Slayer, Catcher Flag, Strongholds, and the Return of Oddball coming back in, which is pretty cool to see. And we also have a weapon, equipment, and grenade on maps will be static spawns as well. So we won't be seeing like we had with the flight where weapon racks and different spawn locations kind of change throughout the game. They'll be static in rank, so that's much more predictable gameplay. So you can play into these power positions a lot more, which is super important. One thing I couldn't really tell from watching the gameplay, if player collision is involved with this i couldn't really tell if it is or isn't because we're watching people who are very well known players within the halo community definitely good players as well they tend to not really bunch up as much except for that very beginning part that we just saw but it was kind of tough to tell exactly if there is player collision within ranked i'm assuming if there's friendly fire there's most likely player collision as well but i have to look into this ask a few questions as well to kind of get back to you guys on that topic as well because i think it's a very important thing when it comes to ranked modes within halo infinite now the gameplay that we did see that was revealed was of Strongholds, which is a game mode returning from Halo 5, which we certainly had a chance to play with in the recent flight. But Strongholds has changed up a bit as well as very, very little detail change, but it does create some very interesting changes. One of those changes being that if you have two capture points, you score points just like you typically do with Strongholds. But now the way it works, if one of those two points is being contested, the points stop adding up. So it gives players who are currently trying to capture a hill a chance to get that hill and maybe make a comeback in some capacity, which I think is actually a much more fair way to go about deciding who wins and loses in match at strongholds right here. And maybe might even put a little bit more emphasis on going for triple caps as well. So then when you actually have all three zones captured, you're not losing points or losing time on the clock, not scoring points. So it'd be very interesting to see how this all truly plays out. But I think it's a good change for strongholds and I can't wait to actually get a chance to play around with it a bit more within the ring settings. Now with this reveal, they also showcase no radar, no motion tracker, no ability radar, just nothing at all, which I think is pretty good for Halo Infinite as it is a slower paced game. So movement's much more predictable, unlike Halo 5, where you're like zooming across the map all the time. You kind of need to have that ability radar to help kind of bring things back a little bit so it's less outrageous out there. And also having radar in general when it came to Halo 5 at launch it was very controversial and not liked by the community whatsoever. I also didn't see the players really utilizing the ping system a whole lot when it comes to this gameplay now obviously these are very well seasoned players some of them are former pros that you know voice call outs are going to be much more effective than utilizing the ping system but obviously we're going to be solo queuing with ranked right ping system is probably going to be very necessary so then not having radar will actually be okay because you have the ping system to rely on which we I, I didn't i hardly ever see anybody using the ping system it's so much information it's great to point that out for a lot of players i love when people use it within the flight i think with ranked we'll be seeing that a lot more compared to social where people are just going to be 
be playing for fun. There's a section within this blog post that actually talks about how they actually nerfed the repulsor a little bit compared to social settings because in social you're able to pancake players, which is really awesome and a lot of fun, but maybe not the best thing for competitive, but looks like it's still there in some capacity. Stating here that the repulsor used to cause quite a bit more damage when a target collided with map geometry like walls and pieces of cover. It was definitely a lot of fun to get pancakes and win fights, but, but it ended up devaluing the gun skill of the player using it as well. So they said working with the team, they've actually tuned down the values to a level that didn't compromise the base time to kill ratio of an enemy, but it allowed for fun things like pancakes and outplays to happen. So that damage being dealt isn't as much with the repulsor. That's a little minute change, but it also has major implications about how it actually gets utilized within the gameplay. They want it to be more of a physics based thing rather than a thing to help get you free kills. Kind of like how launch rank settings were for Halo 5. Now when looking over the gameplay, there was actually a good mix of weapons and equipment being utilized. Like I mentioned, there was a repulsor. There's also the grapple shot being thrown in there on top of that. We also did see the camel within the gameplay. I'm assuming we'll also see overshell and some other maps in different settings as well. But there were some interesting weapons in there. We had the mangler, we had the disruptor, the sword, the commando, which is a fully auto weapon within ranked modes, the plasma pistol returning, the shock rifle on that version of recharge as well. On top of that, a needler so you can go for your embarrassing wall she kill. And Walsy's got double needlers. Uh oh. Is T squared over there? I got presents for him. No, no, no. Just unloading on T squared with the needler. Walsy making a statement right there to T squared saying, Your team does not belong in this match against Final Boss. Yes! That is just, that's some showmanship right there. I don't know. T-Square cannot feel very good about that. Look at his face. The interesting thing about the Mangler is that it looks to be like a one-shot melee, actually, with the weapon, because with a lot of the banished weapons, they have like this blade underneath that, and they actually want to have that play a part of the gameplay, so you can do a one-shot melee and get a kill, rather than having like a three-shot beatdown that you don't really have with the battle rifle. Having the Disruptor in there is quite interesting as well. We'll just have to wait and see how that really does play out. I mean, personally, I think having like the Ravager would be a really cool weapon. They'd be kind of like an area of denial, especially on Strongholds, where I think it would be totally made for that alternate fire mode. But again, we'll just have to wait and see how it plays out. Again, all of these settings are final, right, guys? Because there's going to be changes. There's going to be things that are being fixed up down the line, things added, things taken away from these settings as we progress through the year, probably, of the ranked competitive settings for Halo Infinite. It's interesting to see the Commando as a pickup weapon as well, as, you know, fully auto weapons are generally not really well received within the ranked mode modes, though I think with the commando it plays out a bit different where if you just hold down the trigger the bullets start spraying everywhere you literally can't shoot anything in front of you so I think it has a good balance of being a much more precision based fully auto weapon and an excellent counter to the battle rifle which I wasn't seeing the battle rifle at all when it comes to pickup weapons so putting a bigger emphasis on the sandbox that's in the game as well which one thing I really liked about the reveal as a whole when it comes to the sandbox reveal is that a lot of times when it comes to ranked modes within Halo, it's such a refined experience that it's not, it's a completely different experience than like what social is, which it does look to be that case, but not drastically different. Like say like with Halo 3, where basically everyone's just using the battle rifle and that's about it. With Halo Infinite, you have some fully auto weapons like the Needler, the Commando as well. You have equipment thrown in there with the Repulsor and Grapple Shot. Those look to be the only two mixed in there, but we might have some future ones added in as we get more equipment added to Halo Infinite throughout the years. But I think right now we're at a really good spot where it's like a good starting point for when it comes to rank settings with Halo Infinite, where I think it does a great job of utilizing what the sandbox has to offer while also providing a fair, balanced, and skillful way to play Halo. I mean, I'm certainly going to be grinding out ranks when it comes to playing the game. I want to be I want to be an Ox tier player. That's my goal for Halo Infinite. I was very close in Halo 5, but uh, we'll see what happens with Halo Infinite, obviously. If you guys are new to the channel or missing any content from me recently, check out this playlist where here I've got all my Halo news and informational videos we've been uploading daily about. Thanks so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.